So I was raised as a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations and dreams. The ambition, the aspiration, the dream. I started my career as a prosecutor. I was a career prosecutor for most of my career. Having a background as a prosecutor. I intend to create an opportunity economy. Developing and, and creating an opportunity economy. What I imagine and believe and call um, an opportunity economy. Yeah! <laughs> well, there you go. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. So, Kamala Harris has her first interview since the debate all right so now they're taking off the training wheels there's no emotional support with timmy walls she's out here she had a little practice and so now she have a sit down with msnbc stephanie Uru. and the first question right off the back goes like this because your opponent almost every day seems to be talking about this so i just want to ask you yes or no at any point in your life have you served two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions <laughs> on, on a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun, bun <laughs> working at a McDonald's? Yes or no? That's it. I have. Okay. Now the other job. Now and, the other but job. But it was okay. not a small job. Like, I did okay. the prize. I mean, I, you know. Yes, I mean, for but a small I did. period of time. But then let me ask about a big job. But, but, but to your point, if you don't mind, before Please. you get to the big job, it's a, there's a, part of the reason I even talk about having worked at McDonald's is because... There are people who work at McDonald's in our country who are trying to raise a family. I worked there as a student. I was a kid who worked there trying to raise families and pay rent on that. And I think part of the difference between me and my opponent includes our perspective on the needs of the American people and what our responsibility then is to meet those needs. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. You gave her a yes or no question, a multiple answer question. Easy softball. Okay. Now, I'm not a reporter. I did not go to J school. I have no skills at this. But even I know not to ask a dumbass yes or no question like that. Now, if you really do want to know the answer to that question, Miss Stephanie, you will ask something like, um, what year did you go and work at McDonald's? Or what location McDonald's did you work at? Something in those lines so she could answer the question. You ask a question and start singing a fucking jingle. Oh my God. Oh my God. What is going on these people? Let's go. Madam Vice President, you just laid out your economic vision for the future. Yeah. But still, there are lots of Americans who don't see themselves in your plans. For those who say these policies aren't for me, what do you say to them? Well, if you are hardworking, if you have uh, the dreams and the ambitions and the aspirations of what I believe you do, um, you're in my plan. You know, I, I have to tell you, I really love and I'm so um, energized by what I know to be the spirit and character of the American people. We have ambition. We have aspirations. We have dreams. We can see what's possible. We have an incredible work ethic. But not everyone has the access to the opportunities that allow them to achieve those things. What is she talking about, about dreams and aspirations? Every American have dreams and aspiration. And if you poll everybody in America, they all say they are hardworking. Everybody's hardworking. Everybody got dreams and aspiration. And he should go with the same shit. Oh, my God. Let's go. Some of the work is going to be through what we do in terms of giving benefits and assistance to state and local governments around transit dollars. And looking holistically at the connection between that and housing and looking holistically at the incentives we in the federal government can create for local and state governments to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner 
That includes prioritizing affordable housing. Now, the VP, the vice president of the United States, has used the word holistically three times <laughs> in less than 20 seconds. Now, you guys know me. I'm not a bright guy. I'm just a driver. I didn't go to college. I have barely, barely graduated high school. I don't speak the Queen's English, none of that. Even I know not to use big words like that three times in one sentence. Oh, my God. What would a Harris administration do for those communities who've taken in many, many legal immigrants but are at capacity? Well, first of all, we do have a broken immigration system, mm -hmm. and it needs to be fixed. And if we take a step back, months ago, some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress came together with others, proposed a border security bill. That would have put 1,500 new border agents on the border to help those hardworking border agents who are there right now working around the clock. Would have put more money into stemming the flow of fentanyl, which is killing Americans around our country and devastating communities. Would have put more resources into our ability to prosecute transnational criminal organizations, which in my career I've prosecuted. Donald Trump got word of the bill realized it was going to fix a problem he wanted to run on and told him to kill the bill, don't put it up for a vote. He killed a bill that would have actually been a solution because he wants to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. Now, here we go again. Here we go again. Kamala Harris is trying to use this same line that Donald Trump killed this immigration bill. But before she came as the border czar, immigration was nice and tight. Biden went there and undo all his executive orders of Donald Trump. And so we had this influx of people coming in from the southern border. Now, I don't care what people say that she was not the border czar. Mr. Biden went on The View yesterday and he said this. And as vice president, there wasn't a single thing that I did that she couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to delegate her responsibility on everything from foreign policy to domestic policy. So he delegated that to her. She was the border czar. It's your fault, Kamala, that we have up to 18 million illegal migrants here, Kamala. You can spin this all you want. Talking about Donald Trump is the blame for the immigration. He was not even in office. He's not even in Congress. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. It's you. You were the last person in the room with Biden. You helped him sign or undo the executive order that Donald Trump had put in place. And you still go around talking about this stupid ass bill that only two Republicans and now you want to call it, it was a bipartisan effort. Two Republicans came on. Meanwhile, there's another bill that passed the House that is sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk in the Senate that had bipartisan in it. It had more than uh, 40 House Republicans on it. That's bipartisan. Nobody's talking about Chuck Schumer not passing that bill. You want to focus on this stupid-ass bill that had a lot of pork in it money that's going to Ukraine, money that's going to Palestine and all that. That's the bill you keep talking about. Now, in conclusion, the reporter, Stephanie Rue, is still trying to cover for Kamala, and she says this. Talk about that answer. I do, but here's what's a little tricky. She doesn't answer the question around if the GOP is controlling the Senate, if she can't raise corporate taxes, where is she going to get the money from, is, you know, to expand the child tax credit and do all the things she wants to do? And she says, we just have to do it. And that's great. And that's a campaign promise. But 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 the issue is, if it means we're just going to borrow again, then what we're doing is we're just never addressing the deficit. And back in the days when you were a proud Republican, debts and deficits mattered. Yeah, even the reporter here, even the reporter in the end had to still cover for Kamala. She did not answer any questions. Everything was vague. Everything was talking in circles. And even the reporter still said the same thing that we all seen. And we all know this. 
together, we know that she's an idiot. Kamala Harris, you are as fake as press on nails. She is way past her pay grade. She does not belong near the office. She don't even belong as a senator now. Anyway, that's my thought for today. Hit that like button. I'll see you next time.